So yesterday, I brought you the story of Basecamp, a hipster, gentrified, woke company that decided that it would be a really good idea to outlaw talking about politics at work so that when you come into the office, you actually do your job instead of being little activists all day, every day. Well, I knew this was going to cause chaos when I heard about it last week. And sure enough, within a week's time, about 30% of their employees quit because they would rather come into work and talk about politics than actually do their flipping jobs. Now, yesterday I said that I am positive beyond positive that the reason that they came out with this new rule was because talk of politics and little social activists running around their organization, particularly when they have to operate in a virtual environment, I posited that it had been causing a lot of chaos and a lot of pain inside of Basecamp. And that is the only reason why Jason Fried, who is a very, very, very smart CEO, but he's also like super, super woke in real life. I posited that the only reason that he would have made this business decision would be because it had caused so much pain already and inhibited their productivity, was reducing team morale. And I said, this has got to be, like, Jason Fried does not make decisions willy-nilly. The man has written, like, umpteen really good books, actually, about workplace culture, and he's built his business so smartly. It is a very successful business. The dude does not make decisions off the cup. He's not going to change something like this that he knew going into it was going to have ramifications unless there is a really good reason for it. Well, guess what? Now, thanks to The Verge, we have a little bit of inside information about the struggle session that ensued at Basecamp. Let's just take a look at this first paragraph before we dig in. At 8 a.m. Pacific time on Friday, a bleary-eyed Basecamp CEO, Jason Fried, gathered his remote workforce together on Zoom to apologize. Four days earlier, he had thrown the company into turmoil by announcing that societal and political discussion would no longer be allowed on the company's internal chat forum. So just in case you missed yesterday's video, this is all about the company's internal platform. They, they said employees could still talk about politics in their free time. They could still talk about politics with any employees that were willing to engage with them. They just couldn't do it on the company's internal platform. And that was just too much to bear for 30% of their staff. In his blog post, Reed said the decision stemmed from the fact that today's societal and political waters are especially choppy and the internal discussions of these issues were not healthy and hadn't served us well. The public reaction had been furious and Freed said he was sorry for the way the new policies had been rolled out, but not for the policies themselves. Good for him. He did not bend the knee. So we're going to take a look at the rest of this article. We're basically going to read the whole thing and just enjoy the drama and the struggle session of it all because I'm sorry, this is just good quality entertainment and we don't get this stuff coming around every day. But before we dig into that, listen, I want to talk to you guys about another thing that has really helped my stress level in the past couple months. I always said that if I was going to shill products on my channel, it was only going to be for stuff that I actually believed in. Well, I was one of those people, you guys know, like, I love, like, you know, holistic remedies and I'm into the spiritual woo-woo stuff. Well, I had always seen CBD oil like at the supermarket, I would be like, oh, I want to try that. I want to try CBD oil, but I would never kind of come back and do the research and figure out what was the right one. And then I got introduced to this one, Hemp Works, which I really, really like. And the reason I like this, dude, let me tell you what, I was having such trouble sleeping. Like it was just, it was not good. It was zapping my energy. I wouldn't be able to focus because I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. And then I started doing a couple of drops of this stuff underneath my tongue in the morning and at night, and it has made light years of difference in terms of the quality of my sleep. It's just like super simple, man. And they come in a variety of flavors. This one is cinnamon, which I really like because I really liked those Red Hots candies as a kid, but it also comes in all sorts of other ones. Um, I think they got an orange one. They've got peppermint ones. They've got all sorts of different varieties that you can try. I have the full spectrum CBD oil. So if you want to give this a try yourself, and it has lots of other benefits. The, the sleep one is just the most pronounced for me. But if you want to give this a try yourself, hit up the link in the description below. I'll also pin it in a comment 
underneath this video on YouTube and you'll help support the channel, but you'll also get to try some awesome CBD oil that could help you in any number of ways. And thank you guys for supporting the channel. It really helps me out. I greatly appreciate it. All right, let's get back to our struggle session, shall we? Let's see. Behind the scenes, Freed had been dealing with an employee reckoning over a standing company policy of maintaining a list of funny customer names, some of which were Asian or African in origin. Oh my god, we know exactly where this is going, don't we? The internal discussion over the list had been oriented primarily around making Basecamp feel more inclusive to its employees and customers. But Freed and co-founder David had been taken aback by the employee post which argued that mocking customer names laid the foundation for racially motivated violence and closed the thread. They also disbanded an internal committee of employees who had volunteered to work on issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is what I'm talking about. Once an issue in an organization gets to this level where there are actually policies enacted by the CEO, it didn't come out of nowhere. This was a lot of little things that added up over time to them saying, that's really, really counterproductive to our business goals. On Fridays, employees had their chance to address these issues directly with Freed and his co-founder. What follows was a wrenching discussion that left several employees I spoke with in tears. 30 minutes after the meeting ended, Freed announced that Basecamp's long-term head of strategy, Ryan Singer, had been suspended and placed on investigation after he questioned the existence of white supremacy at the company. Oh. My. God. It gets even better. Over the weekend, Singer, who worked for the company for nearly 18 years and authored a book about project management for Basecamp called Shape Up, Stop Running in Circles, and Ship Work That Matters, resigned. Within a few hours of the meeting, at least 20 people, more than one-third of Basecamp's 57 employees, had announced their intention to accept buyouts from the company. And while many of them had been leaning towards resignation in the aftermath of Freed's original post, the meeting itself pushed several to accelerate their decisions, employees said. The response overwhelmed the founders, who extended the deadline to accept buyouts indefinitely amid an unexpected surge of interest. And let me just say at this point, this is a good thing. It is a good thing. Is it going to cost a little bit of temporary pain for Basecamp as they fill these positions? Oh, yeah. It's going to cause some pain. It's going to suck for a hot minute. But at the end of the day, what's happened in this is you've taken employees who are more interested in talking about politics at work than they are in doing their job and you have shown them the door. In the long run, this is going to be the very best thing to happen at Basecamp because what they're going to get the opportunity to do is to bring in people who actually want to do work. I know that's a foreign concept for the workplace, but they're going to be able to bring in employees who actually want to do work and don't care about talking about politics when they're at the office. Politics should be outside the office. Politics should be separate from real life. You don't bring this crap to work. And I don't care if I agree with your politics or I disagree with your politics. When you're at work, you're there to do a job. You're there to work with other people, regardless of whether or not you agree with who they voted for. This is one of the very best things that could happen long term for this company in terms of their productivity. This account is based on interviews with six Basecamp employees who are present at the meeting, along with a partial transcript created by employees. Oh, I'm sure that that transcript is 100% accurate. Collectively, they describe a company whose attempt to tamp down on difficult conversations blew up in its face as employees rejected the notions that discussions of power and justice should remain off limits in the workplace. Then those employees can go work somewhere else. Then they can go work for a little woke company where they do woke things all day and never actually get anything done. I promise you, in the coming years, we are going to see really successful companies be absolutely shaken to their core over what woke employees are going to do to them. It's going to be a glorious scene to behold. And they suggest the efforts to eliminate disruptions in the workplace by regulating internal speech may cause even more turmoil for the company in the long run. My honest sense of what everybody is leaving behind is everyone is leaving because they're tired of Jason and David's behavior. The suppression of voices of any dissent. They really don't care what employees have to say. That's not true. If they don't think it's an issue, it's not an issue. If they don't experience it, it's not real. And this was the final straw for a lot of employees, dude. If you've ever read 
one of Jason Fried's books. That is fundamentally not true. But what I do know about him from reading his work is he is actually focused on the end goal in mind, which is to build and run a successful business. And what he's doing in this, because again, my understanding of him is that he's like uber woke in real life. But my best guess at what happened is that he saw that infusing woke politics into your corporate culture only damaged productivity. And that's why he wanted it removed. While Friday's meeting would eventually grow heated, it began on a conciliatory note. Freed, who employees described as looking tired, began the meeting by apologizing for announcing the policy changes by a public blog post rather than telling all employees first. Hansen, his co-founder, tuned into the meeting from bed where he reported that he was feeling ill and after making introductory remarks, turned off his camera for the duration of the meeting. Freed opened the floor for comments and questions. For the next two and a half hours, employees pressed the founders on policy changes, the events leading up to them and the state of the company. The first part of the meeting was devoted to discussing events that unfolded in the company's internal base camp chat last month, in which an employee cited the Anti-Defamation League's Pyramid of Hate to argue that documents like the funny names list laid a foundation that contributes to racist violence and even to genocide. Basecamp, a project management tool. Literally, that's what it is. It is a project management tool. It is a piece of software that is contributing to genocide, apparently. Roughly 90 minutes into the meeting, Singer raised his hand and spoke. One of Basecamp's most senior executives, he had joined the company in 2003 when it was known as 37 Signals and consisted of just four people. From his original role designing interfaces, Singer had risen to the, become the head of strategy, essentially Basecamp's chief product officer. Along the way, he had also alienated some of his coworkers by promoting conservative views. Oh my god, so what you're saying is conservatives aren't allowed to talk about politics at work, but everyone else is. It's just people who have views that disagree with you that it's totally okay to silence their voices, but everyone else should be allowed to talk. In 2016, three employees said he praised right-wing websites Breitbart coverage of the presidential election in an internal forum. They remembered from four years ago that he said something nice about Breitbart in a forum? This is the best thing that's ever happened at Basecamp. Mark my words. About a week before rolling out the policy changes, the founders deleted nearly two decades of internal conversations from previous instances at Basecamp and its other collaborative products. Among other things, this made it difficult for employees I spoke with to accurately describe past interactions with singers in the forum. In the April discussion about the list of customer names, Singer posted to say that attempting to link the list to genocide was absurd. Oh my god, Basecamp had a voice of reason and they have literally driven him out. This is why this all happened. This is what is going on right here. This, they had one voice of salient reason in the company, and they drove him out. Uh, let's see. On the Friday call, he went further. I strongly disagree. We live in a white supremacist culture, Singer said. I don't believe in a lot of framing around implicit bias. I think a lot of it is actually racist. Oh, so he's not allowed to express those views, right? He continued, very often, if you express a dissenting view, you get called a Nazi. I have not felt this was open territory for discussion. If we were trying to get into it as a group discussion, it would be very painful and divisive. Singer concluded his remarks. Freed responded, thank you, Ryan. A handful of other speakers followed. Then a black employee asked if the company could revisit Singer's remarks. I'm withholding the employee's name and other identifying details out of colleagues' fears that he can be targeted for harassment for speaking out. Oh my god, it's not as though you haven't been harassing the head of the frickin' product for the last four years because he posted in an internal forum that he liked Breitbart. The fact that you can be a white male and come to this meeting and call people racist and say white supremacy doesn't exist when it's blatant at this company is white privilege, the employee said. The fact that he wasn't corrected and was in fact thanked. It makes me sick. That's not someone you want working for your company. Right there. That is not... In fact, I'm going to go so far as to quote Will Chamberlain on Twitter when I, when I say I fully back up his idea that if someone, if an ally, if an ally, not a trans person, if an ally has pronouns in their bio on Twitter, you do not hire that person. You don't do it. 
don't bring them into your company because this is the type of nonsense that is going to follow. Freed went to move on, but other employees pressed him for more of a response. At that point, employees said Singer spoke up again. I can gladly respond, he said. I stand by what I said. Saying white people have something in common is racist. I stand by it. I am very sure I don't treat people in a racist way. Singer remembers one of these quotes differently. I said, the claiming that anyone must have a certain viewpoint because of the color of their skin is racist, he said today. The black employee said they did not want to hear from Singer. But after some crosstalk, he finished his statement. The difficulty of this... So, okay, so the black employee doesn't want to have a difficult conversation. Is that what I'm hearing? The difficulty of this conversation is exactly why I raised it. The black employee responded, You said white supremacy doesn't exist. That's a factual lie. It's not true. To which Singer responded, I said we have different ways of framing. If you want to debate whether it exists anywhere, then yeah. But not here at this company with the people I associated with. It exists right now, another employee said. This is effing BS. You are being ridiculous. I don't accept that framing, Singer responded. It's not productive to argue further. I don't want to argue. The difference in views is what makes political discussion so difficult. And this is exactly why they banned it in the first place. This right here. Because when political discussion exists in organizations, only one side is allowed to have a point of view. And anything that dissents or offers a different point of view or has different politics will be considered verboten. Employees once again pressed Freed and Hansen for a, re for a response. I don't like hearing that someone doesn't feel valued, People sa Freed said. I don't know what to say. I can understand why the employees feel uncomfortable right now. I feel terrible about it. I don't know how else to respond. The employee called for the pe founders to denounce white supremacy. That would be a bare minimum from me. I'm not here to share my personal views on anything, Freed said. I'm horrified when one group dominates another. Freed, who is Jewish which doesn't really matter. Jewish Jews are very, very low on the impression hierarchy. Added that he had lost relatives during the Holocaust. I think it's absolutely the most disgusting thing in the world. I can't say that's happening here. Freed added that he didn't know what to say about the specific terms. I don't know how to satisfy that right now. Hansen remained on mute. It was in that exchange that several employees decided to quit base camp. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that is the exchange that says this has just gone too far. Dude, GTFO. Like, don't let the door hit you. Again, I know I've said it 15 times already in this video. This is one of the very best things that's ever happened to Basecamp. Basecamp will be more successful as a result of this incident. This was a test as far as I'm concerned, one employee said to me later. Do you protect this extremely senior employee that you protected for many years? And the answer was yes. Yeah, when you have someone that's been with you since there were only four people at the company, has worked their way up through the ranks, weren't just handed a senior role, worked for years to work their way up for the ranks, you usually tend to have loyalty to those people because those people will have loyalty to you. Those people have already demonstrated that they've had loyalty to you. Now, you don't, you don't put your blinders on. If that employee is actually being toxic, then, then you do something about it. But the reality is this. That employee did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. If, if the discussion is about, can we express political views at work? Guess what he did? He expressed a political view at work. It just happened to be a political view that other employees disagreed with because they don't want all politics to be expressed at work. They only want politics that they agree with to be expressed. That is all that is allowed. Over the next hour, employees continued to come forward to discuss Basecamp's new policies and what it was like going forward. But before the meeting ended, one employee spoke up to address Singer's remarks directly in a way that Freed and Hansen did not. Racism and white supremacy are not things that are so convenient that they only happen when full intention is present or true malice is present. The employee said evil is not required. We're not so lucky as for this to come down to good versus evil. It's as simple as creating a space where people do not feel welcome. Well, if you don't feel welcome, G-T-F-O. The employee continued, the silence in the background is what racism and white supremacy does. It creates that atmosphere that feels suffocating to people. It doesn't require active malice. It's not that convenient. The meeting broke up after mo no more employees had questions. Ha half hour after the meeting ended, 
Freed posted an internal note saying that Singer had been suspended pending an investigation. And that is where he bent the knee. B.S. B.S. That really upsets me. And I, I get that Jason Freed's under a lot of stress, but, um, but I applaud Ryan Singer for quitting when someone does not show loyalty to you over nonsense. He added that the company was bringing up an, unspec an unspecified outside help to address the situation. Oh, God. No, 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 no! Dude, you started the beginning of the article with him saying that he doesn't apologize for the policies themselves, and now we're literally ending the article with him bending the knee. Ugh, too bad, too bad. On a Monday interview, uh, Free told me that Singer had resigned. I asked free to clarify his remarks during the Friday meeting, which had clearly caught him off guard. I denounce white supremacy unconditionally. Oh no! He's backtracked. It's too bad. Free declined to answer my other questions on the record. I also asked Singer about his remarks. Here is what he said overall in an over email in full. I objected to an employee's statement that we live in a white supremacist culture, white supremacy, white supremacism exists, and America's history of racism still presents terrible problems, but I don't agree that we should label our entire culture with this ideology. On the call, the view I gave was we all want a future where everyone is treated fairly, and yet there can be disagreement on whether defining our culture as white supremacist helps us to get there. The subject is so charged that discussing such disagreements at work quickly leads to misunderstanding, heated accusations, and loss of faith. Unfortunately, painful misunderstandings did result. Tensions were so high after the call that I decided it wouldn't be tenable to stay on the team. I gave my resignation over the weekend. This is sad. This is sad. Basecamp, I had such I had such hope for you that you were going to get through this and be better off for it. But now if Jason Freed is bringing in diversity consultants, is he's actually going to make the problem worse. He's going to make it worse, and that's really, really sad. All right, the article's almost done, but we're going to finish up. This week was to have been Basecamp's virtual biannual meetup in which employees come together to bond over social activities while talking about the future of the company. Those discussions will still take place, but amidst a backdrop in which some of the company's most senior leadership has abruptly departed. More employees are likely to follow in the coming weeks as they find new jobs and make other arrangements, I'm told. In the meantime, no changes to the policies that Free laid la out last week are planned. Except that he suspended an employee for expressing a dissenting opinion. Freed and Hansen's moves last week and the discussion around them revealed clear fault lines between executives and workers that go far beyond Basecamp. Founders at Coinbase, Basecamp, and other companies that have sought to quash internal dissent that, in their view, distracts workers from the company's mission and makes everyone miserable. To a manager, the exchange that led to Singer's departure could lend credence to the idea that addressing social injustices on a company's Zoom is bound to be disastrous. Exactly! That is the point. That is why you don't have these discussions at work. Meanwhile, employees at these companies have recoiled at what appears to be transparent efforts to prevent their workplaces from becoming more diverse, equitable, and inclusive. No. No! That's not what this means, dude. Like, you can have all different levels of diversity at work and then still not talk about politics. These are two different things. No one I interviewed offered a confident prediction about how the past week's events would affect Basecamp over the long term. I'll offer a confident position if Jason Freed does not bend the knee and he, he backtracks on whatever diversity consultant he's thinking about bringing in, this will be better for them in the long run. I will firmly put that stake in the ground. I do believe that if Jason Freed stays the course, does not bend the knee, does not bring in stupid diversity consultants, it will he will be better off in the long run. On one hand, it's clear that the five books Freed and Hansen wrote lecturing other people about good management made them a lot of enemies, at least on Twitter, where they have been criticized relentlessly. Well, no, their books are actually pretty great. Um, and they're making enemies on Twitter because they went against the narrative. On the other hand, one employee told me, it's not clear the average Basecamp customer knows or cares much about Basecamp the company, and no one predicts a mass result, a revolt rather, of the user base. But as much as the conversations about Basecamp's move have been framed as politics, it seems important to remember that the entire affair began when a third of the company, not all of whom were among the 20 who have departed so far, by the way, 
volunteered to help the company become more diverse and equitable. It was only when the committee dug out a skeleton uh, out of the company closet, the list of names, that Fried and Hansen moved to shut the whole thing down. It was actually a positive thing we were doing. Well, no, they think it's positive. They think it's positive. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work out. Anyway, listen. Basecamp did the right thing. It's a temporary pain. Sometimes you have to go through some pain to get to a better outcome. But long term, they absolutely did the right thing. But based on this article, I'm really, I'm concerned that they're going to backtrack. Uh, I'm concerned that that they really didn't maybe, I, I thought based on reading that blog post, they absolutely understood the backlash that was going to come at them. I'm a little bit more concerned now. But hey, we'll watch it. It's going to go one way or the other. At the end of the day, Basecamp is currently a really successful company. And um, we'll just have to watch and see what happens in the future. All right, guys, that's all I've got. I'll see you soon.